Good morning. Thank you for joining me, Pastor Zach Williams of the Flat Creek Baptist Church here in Gainesville, Georgia, for another edition of New Horizons. Today, we're going to continue looking at this Passion Week of Jesus. We're going to be here uh, for the next couple of days, uh, especially as we're kind of walking with Jesus now to the cross. The cross is closer than it has ever been. Jesus is living in the shadow of the cross. He knows there will be no crown without the cross. And so Jesus is walking that way. He's the lamb that's slain before the foundations of the world. Jesus knows what is in the distance. He's not shrinking back in fear. He's not backing up uh, with worry or anxiety uh, or, 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 or being too scared or afraid. He knows what lays before him. And the writer of Hebrews says, For the joy that laid before him endured a cross and suffered the shame. Jesus knows what's coming and he's walking directly to the cross at this moment. And when we look at the text today, we're going to come back to where we were yesterday uh, because uh, my podcast time ran out. These are 10 minutes long and I wasn't able to cover this last section of this uh, of this teaching of Jesus yesterday. So I want to make sure I cover it today. If you remember yesterday, we talked about them coming back to a point where Peter saw that the fig tree was withered. And Jesus gives them this amazing spiritual application about prayer. Have faith in God. You can say to this mountain, get up and move and it will be moved. And we're going to rehash all that today. But Jesus gets down to this point in this teaching on prayer. And he says the following. And if, and, and whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him so that your father in heaven will also forgive your wrongdoing. But if you don't forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your wrongdoing. So we're talking about forgiveness here. And when we're thinking about forgiveness, uh, friends, I, I want to encourage you today uh, to, to not harbor bitterness against a brother or sister in Christ or even against a lost person. Uh, oftentimes what we find is that when we, in our own persons, when we hold unforgiveness in our hearts that at the end of the day, who is really harmed? It's not the person that we refuse to forgive. It's actually us. Number one, it becomes this deep festering wound in our souls that we can't let go of. And so we need to go and forgive that person for that. But then secondly, and most importantly, Jesus said, now this is Jesus. He, he says, if you have unforgiveness in your heart, then your prayers will be hindered. Now, now think about that for just a moment. And I want you to hear this story that I'm going to tell you about something that happened when I was young in the ministry. So the town that I was pastoring in was down in South Carolina, and it was uh, a town that was very poverty stricken and uh, really just had all sorts of hardships. It was just in, it just, it was just, it was just broken down, destitute, dilapidated. Um, there were just uh, so much going on in the city. And so we had a missions organization that was coming into the town in order to do mission work. And so we um, had gotten all these different churches together in order to give money, um, or excuse me, uh, all these churches together in order that this, this other church mission organization could come in and help us reach our city with the gospel and do mission work. And so we were all getting together to give and to work and to do these things together. Uh, and so as we were planning these um, service days, where I was at was in Chester County, South Carolina, and the Baptist Church, we have what's called ministerial associations, where all the churches will come together as uh, in, in an association. And in the ministerial association, we have what's called mission directors, somebody uh, that acts as the mission director over every church and their full-time employees. So this man was our missions director and he's a nice guy, but he comes into this room and we have all these churches gathered together, this mission organization, this church is going to come and help us out. So we're all together in this room and the missions organization, the church uh, that's coming to partner with us, they, they ask the question, what needs exist? And so we start to give all these needs about all these different things that exist. And well, then the missions director raises his hand 
and he says, hey, if y'all are up to doing mission work, I need a new roof on my house. Well, I'm sitting here in the chair and I'm thinking to myself, how selfish of you? You got all these people in this community that need help and you are the missions director and here's a missions organization coming to town and you're looking for them to put a new roof on your house instead of helping all these other people out. And so in the coming days, uh, we were preparing for this missions organization to come down. Now, as this missions project was going to be taking place, we were also going to be having a crusade. So every night we were going to be inviting people to come to a crusade in, in order to reach people with the gospel of Jesus. So as this missions organization is coming to town, they had planned to actually help this missions um, director out. And I began to go to the pastors of all these different churches and say, I listen, I think this is wrong what this man has done. And I will not support him. And I will not allow anybody from my church to go help that man out because he should be helping others. And so I stirred up all those pastors and all those pastors got in line with me and they said, we won't send anybody either. So when the day came for people to go to this man's house to put a new roof on his house, guess what? Only two people from that missions organization went to put a roof on that man's house. Simultaneous to all this, the crusade was going on and for three days, they were working on the house. I was content. Hey, nobody went to help him. I got my way. But guess what? Nobody was getting saved. Nobody was coming forward at that crusade. God's spirit was not moving and it seemed dead. And that night, one night I come home and I was talking to my brother-in-law and I said, I just don't understand why nobody's moving. What is going on? Why is this crusade not as powerful as I thought it would be? Why, why are we not seeing God's spirit moved? And God spoken in my heart and said, because you are harboring this bitterness in your heart toward your brother in Christ and you need to ask forgiveness. And I'm going to tell you, friends, at that moment, here's a man who's a missions director that didn't even have a clue that I was out getting people organized with me to stand opposed to him. And, and, and now God's telling me the crusade's not going forward because, I re, because of what I've done. And, and now God wants me to call this individual and actually confess to him what I've been doing in the background. Well, this is going to hurt him. He doesn't even know what's going on, God. Why? Why would I do this? So I talked to my brother-in-law. My brother-in-law said, said, Zach, true repentance spawns action. If you are really repentant over this, you will call him and tell him. So I called the brother on the phone. It was about 1.30 a.m. in the morning. And I confessed to him what I had done. He cried. I cried. And he said to me, I'll never forget this before we got off the phone. I said, once again, sir, I just want to tell you, I'm sorry. And he said, sorry about what? And I said, what do you mean, sorry about what? Don't, don't you, I just told you. He said, Zach, is already forgotten. Don't worry about it. Is over. I forgive you, brother. I learned a great lesson on forgiveness that night. You know what happened the next day? We were able to finish putting the roof on his house. And do you know that night, the altar call during that worship service lasted over 30 minutes. Many got saved. There was, there was forgiveness and, and, and forgiveness offered and received. And it was an amazing night and God moved in ways we can never imagine. So friends, if you are harboring unforgiveness in your heart or you need to forgive somebody, could it be that you're the one who's holding up the move of God? Go make it right with your brother. True repentance spawns action. Guys, I love you. God bless you. And I'll see you next time on New Horizons.